I bet you don't know about all of the Home Assistant dashboard tips and tricks that you're about to see in few seconds, and here is a challenge. Watch till the end, and if you know them all, dislike this video and leave a comment. Otherwise, leave a like and subscribe for more. And without further ado, here is the first one. Do you know that you can make badges that are staying on top of your Home Assistant dashboard? These badges or widgets are little circles that can show different sensor or even pictures like thumbnail and they are not visible by default. You have to manually add them. To add one or more of these badges you have to press the three dots menu at the top right, then edit dashboard, three dots menu again and edit row configuration. And below this path default view or if you have more than one view you can do the same for them of course so below this line I'll paste the following lines badges column and then some entities that I want to show as badges for example I'll show the person Kirill that's me and an image that is pre-uploaded in my config www folder and the file there is named me.jpg I'll also show the sum sensor as icon and I'm ready. I can also add as many sensors, as many entities I want below. But for the demo, I'll stick to just these two. Then I'll hit save. Then I'll close this. And as you can see, I have two badges, myself and the sun. I can even click on these icons and I can see their detailed information. One faster way and even safer is to edit the dashboard and then to click on this pencil button, then to go on this badges tab and from here you can add whatever buttons and entities you wish. That way you don't have to deal with the raw code editor and the chance of breaking something is much, much smaller. Next quick tip is grouping of cards and more precisely grouping of tau cards. Tau cards were introduced in Home Assistant 2022.11 and they are quite smaller than the regular Home Assistant cards. But if you have just one tau card on your dashboard, you're losing space. So why don't you group multiple tau cards? Here is how. I'll edit my dashboard again. I'll add a new card. I'll search for tau card and I'll add it. But as you can see, this is not saving much space. Instead of that, I'll add another card and I'll search for grid. Here it is. And then I can search for tau cards and add it. The first tau card will be the sun. Then I can add another one. I'll search for tau card again. This time the entity can be person Kiryu for example, I can add one more and this can be tile card again, the entity will be light, for example this one and I can even add more, the second row, again I'll add a tile card, this will be humidity and I can fill this row as well. And when I save this grid of tau cards, I'll have a space that is similar to this one card here, but instead of one entity, inside it I'll have four or even six. And I can click on them and I can open the detailed information about these sensors and entities. Before I continue to the next one, I just want to quickly share that all the tips are quick and easy like downloading my Smart Home Glossary, which is full of useful info about most common Smart Home words and abbreviations, and it is totally free. Get it now from the video description or from the link on your screen. Gauge card is easy, you just add it and it works. But do you know that you can add severity and needle? And here comes the tricky part. By default, you can set some values for three colors green, yellow and red, similar to a traffic light. This is useful if you have a sensor that needs to represent three general states. But what if you want to add any number of segments and what if you want custom colors? Well, that is possible and I hope you don't know how to do that so I can earn my like. I'll edit my dashboard again and I'll add a gauge card. 
as entity I'll select my battery level for example this is my phone and this is the battery of my phone down here I can display as needle gauge and define severity if I type 33 here 66 here the gauge is divided in three equal zones which is kind of nice then I'll click on this show code editor and I'll delete this severity instead I'll paste the following YAML code you can get that from the video description and instead of severity I'll add segments which are very similar from 0 to 20 the color will be red represented in RGB style similar to Photoshop or HTML you can get these codes from internet everywhere and I'll also add a label which is optional in my case the label will be recharge and if the needle goes in this zone instead of percentage here there will be a text saying recharge which is kind of nice again this is entirely optional then from 20 to 40 I'll use yellow color notice here that instead of this RGB value I'll use a regular English color in my case yellow next I have orange another color which is blue from 60 to 80 and finally one more segment which is full of course I can add even more segments or I can delete some for example like that I can add more labels of course let's add a label here for example blue it doesn't matter the text I'll save this and as you can see here because the needle is between 60 and 80 percent and because I added a label instead of percentage here I can see the word blue come on here be fair did you know all of that I didn't knew it either until I started throwing some random digits while filming this video and I still don't know it by heart so I have to rewatch that video again next time I want to create a fancy gauge card anyways moving to the next trick there are views and subviews in home assistant but I got the feeling that subviews are kind of not as widely used which is a shame because they're useful ask your spouse about the home assistant subviews and see what she or he knows about it if you don't believe me subviews were introduced back in home assistant 2022.10 release and if you ask me how I remember that the answer is I don't I just checked my notes about my older videos anyways subviews are created as usual the only difference is that the subview switch have to be enabled during the creation process then inside the subview I can add as many gauge cards as I wish of course I can add other cards as well and I can order them the way I like just like the regular view but here comes the differences the subviews are not shown in the navigation bar and they cannot be accessed the same way as the normal views instead I have to link the subview to a let's say button and to place that button on a regular view for example I can make a living room button and I can link that button to the living room subview that I created earlier if I click now on the living room button the living room subview will be open so from now on I'll have a living room button that will lead me to all of my living room devices let me know in the comments are you going to use that simple yes or no is enough do you ever wanted to add some text and hyperlinks on your home assistant dashboard well by using a markdown card you can do that very easily markdown is a simple way to format text that looks great on any device it doesn't do anything fancy just the essentials like bold italic and strikes all of that using special symbols around the text that you want to format while configuring a markdown card left side on the dialog is where you can type your text and where some useful examples are already added for your convenience on the right side you can see the result what is missing among the examples in the markdown card is how to add images and linked images but do not worry I'll show you I'll edit the dashboard I'll add a markdown card I'll search for markdown here I'll click on the markdown card and this is the content 
this is the title and below that I can add my own code I have to add few lines below that to show it better to you so this is the syntax the old text then the URL to a certain image available on the internet and a title if I hover my mouse on top of this image I will see the old text and if I want, I can add a link to this image as well. You can copy these examples from the video description, so you don't have to try to remember them. Similarly to the above example, I'll add the image, but then I'll add the actual link. Now, if I click on this image, it will lead me to my website, payanski.com. I can save this. And as you can see, this is the link. If I click on it, it will open my website. This is valid if the picture that you're trying to show is hosted somewhere on the internet. But what if you want to stay a local only? For that, you have to upload a picture in your home assistant config slash www folder. If you don't have such folder yet, you have to create it and then to restart your home assistant. I'll edit the card again and I'll delete these two lines and instead of them I'll add this one again I have the old text and a URL but this time the URL is a local IP which is the IP of my home assistant and then slash local as a folder slash the file name of the picture and that's it I can add a hyperlink as well just to demonstrate you that I uploaded this image in my config www folder. Here it is. This is the image that I'm displaying, but I refer to it as a local slash file name. And that is the trickiest part here. And that was one more trick in your home assistant sleeve. Hope you like them all. And if you want to learn more, feel free to register for my upcoming home assistant webinar. You can reserve your spot for free on my website automatelike.pro/webinar. Thanks for watching. I'm Kirill and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.